Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we're bringing you brand new information on Cthulhu Death May Die, Chapter 3, Fear of, of the, the Unknown. Unknown. By the way, we do have a full preview mm -hmm. coming out. We also have a full gameplay game with the lead designer from Simon, yep. Travis Chance, who has nothing to do with Cthulhu Death May Die. But he's very handsome. But he is very handsome, quite mm -hmm. charming, and we had a really good time. We, we also did. played with entirely different things, different modules than mm -hmm. anyone else you've seen. Yes. So you're gonna want to check it out, but Definitely. in this video we're going to be walking you through all of the exclusive stuff in the prototype. All the stuff that at the moment has not been fully shown off Correct. or been talked about. We're gonna spend yeah. some time going through the cards, working through the mechanics of the game, showing you what we have, what information we have that's new before the campaign actually launches. So let's go ahead and start diving into it. So Do it. The, the core new stuff in Death or in fear of the unknown, is going to be, well, the unknown. It's going to be introducing a few different unknown types. You have unknown creatures, which are going mm -hmm. to be a module that change up the play experience from chapter to chapter. These are going to be creatures that typically trigger based off of the old one actually progressing forward. Which is on a completely separate track on the right-hand side. It's on side. a separate board, and you're going to have unknown relics. So we're going to go through both of those. The relics are going to be things that start off with a limited power and then scale in power and complexity as you become more and more mad over the course of the game. In classic Cthulhu Death May Die style, Everything here is escalating. Right. It's harder and it's more powerful. It gets bigger and badder, and you also get to kill it more quickly. Yes. That's sort of the, the satisfying arc that Death May Die does. <laughs> While going crazier and crazier the entire time. Yeah. So we're going to go through all of the creatures we have. We're going to go through all of these little uh, mythic mythos cards that we have so you can see the base deck for this new box. We're going to go through the six... Arkham Santarium Patient Medical Files, which mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people are asking for more of more those. Of those. More, more, I more. I also hope we get more of those. Yeah, they're really good. I don't think, I think Simon's running out of ideas. So if you've got an fair, idea, yeah. just leave it down below. Absolutely. And then they have no excuse but to give us like 20 <laughs> of them, right? 20 would be... 20 would be a good start. 32, reasonable? The, you know, isn't 42 the answer to everything? Mm, okay. Maybe we should do that. Leave a Set comment that. down below, then Simon has no excuse but to give us 42, 42. different variations of those medical files. Yep. We're going to be going through all of our relic cards. We're going to be going through a few of these uh, big baddie cards that yep. we have over there. And then these are all of our different item cards and... Item cards from the particular scenario that we're going to be playing, and these have a new mechanic that we're going to talk about a little bit, so that's one reason mm -hmm. why we're going to go through them. And mm. we're going to go through all of our brand new character boards, which, uh, which I feel like we should do a little bit of flavor text for them too. I know people mm -hmm. don't want all the flavor text, but Fair. they want a little bit. So, to start with, let's go ahead and establish Cthulhu Death May Die, Fear of the Unknown. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Welcome to Fear of the Unknown, Season 3 of Cthulhu Death May Die, coming soon to Kickstarter. What do you have in your hand is the prototype of the new core box. It contains one episode, one elder one, where the full scenario, three box, will have six episodes and two elder ones. They just announced the second elder one, which is very exciting. Also, the art you see here is not final, nor is the, te nor is the text. Similarly, the miniatures are plastic examples of what will go through more refinement. Yes, yes, yes. Please keep these factors in mind when doing your review of your product. Get out of here. Season 3 brings you two new exciting features of uh, four games of Death May Die. They are unknown monsters and unknown relics, which I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. These new features can be added to any episode of the game, including episodes from Season 1 and Season 2. Feel free to mix with other monsters and experiment with these new features in your games. We hope you like these new additions. Uh, they can spice up episodes that you've played before, giving you a new play experience with old favorites. We really hope you enjoy the pre preliminary look of what is in store for the upcoming Kickstarter campaign. Hey, if, if you want us to do, like, like a Season 2 like a classic original Death May Die with some of these new mechanics mixed in. Ooh, that could be cool. Let us know what let us know what chapter and what season you'd like us to play cuz I'm totally up to doing a season yeah. 3 gameplay Absolutely. that is old content with but new, new content. Yeah. That might be neat to see cuz really cool. I want to I want to know if it really is as backwards compatible as it is mm -hmm. cuz some of these are designed around some like they they feel like they fit. Yep. I don't know. I'm curious. Cool. Okay, let's go through our characters here. So, okay. start with one of the things that I personally find the most exciting, the most interesting in this game. 
starting with Agatha. Now, all of your Death May Die characters are going to have their two standard abilities. I don't think there's any new variations of these being mixed in here. We've got Marksman, we've got Stealth. However, each one is also going to have its own unique progression. So, Killer Instinct, West. Mm -hmm. So once per turn, when attacking, you may take one stress to deal one additional wound. That's okay. pretty powerful. Where you can upgrade it, you don't need to take any stress when using this skill. Uh, the next okay. upgrade is instead all of your attacks deal one additional wound. So all like of your that. attacks do. That's really cool. Okay. And then instead, all of your attacks deal two so additional wounds. she just becomes wounds. insanely powerful. Mad power. What's her quote here? I learned to shoot when people wouldn't stop calling me Aggie. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, and let's Love flip it. this back over here. Should we go through all flavor text? Is that like what this video is? Maybe the ones that make us laugh with their flavor text? With the quote? Or the ones that we have to read? Okay, the ones that make us laugh with the quote, mm -hmm. we'll go through and read the flavor text. So she's, she's gonna be this one, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, see, Agatha is part of a large criminal family, eh? Though she's given up her title when she was uh, as an heir apparent. She doesn't want to run the business when she's got eldritch whores to put down. The eggheads and bookworms in the business are good at their jobs, but not always good in a fight. Agatha is a very good in a fight. As such, she's happy to be simple muscle, see? And maybe somebody will help the scholars do the occasional bit of, uh, you know, less than legal <laughs> acquisition for their research. Oh, and if you value your skin intact, don't ever call her Aggie. Love it. Yeah, love it. She looks awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. we've got Mike. Mike is going to have brawling and toughness. He's like a classic bodybuilder. Yeah, like that old strength yeah. man, you know, with the big round weights on the side. I kind of love it. Yeah. Although the weights are not real weights. That's no. how they always work. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, proficient. When attacking for each stress you spend to reroll a die, you may reroll one additional die. Resolve one at a time. That's a lot of stress control. That's a mm -hmm. lot of dice control. So you're going to be a little bit more precise. His upgrade, you may also do this on rolls that are not attacks. That's nice. Upgrade upgrade number three, when attacking, you may heal one stress before the roll. You're basically never going to run out of stress with that. That's really nice. And then upgrade number four, you may also heal one stress before rolls that are not attacks. So a lot of dice mitigation, yeah, for a me. lot of dice control manipulation there. That's I awesome. really like him. Yep. I didn't get a chance to play with him. So anger is good. Da makes one feel alive. Mm -hmm. You're not reading? You're not, you are not. didn't laugh at it? We didn't need to. Oh, wait, we got to show the back. Okay, gotta, yeah, that's fair. So that people can pause if they want. Fair. Mike fair. Kroslov. Oh, he's got like a pike here. Interesting. He like took the weights off the end that and he's just sense. like swinging the actual makes stick sense. itself. Sweet. All right, we're not reading his... Uh... Not reading his thing. Sandra, who is Sandra West? Sandra is a relic seeker. So that's her special concept. Okay. So at the start of her first turn of the game, you take two random relics and choose one to keep. You may have more than one relic, which is awesome because relics the special things are there. are really powerful. Yeah, they that give you super lots cool. of mitigation. So that she gets to have two, which is pretty cool. Interesting. Now, you would not be able to play her without relics included in the game. Yeah, because her special power that's really her whole, That's her whole feature, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, upgrades. Uh, so when investigating, you may claim items without taking stress. That's nice. Very nice. And um, level two is pretty nice no matter what. Yeah. At the end of your turn, heal one stress for each relic item uh, and item that you have. Ooh. Wow. At one point in the game, you had like seven yeah. items. Um, and then instead of investigating, you may gain a random transformed relic. Oh, a random gosh. transformed relic? Dang. She's awesome. She's she crazy a blast powerful. To play. What's her quote? Is it going to make you laugh? I'd say this belongs in a museum, but we don't need the patrons going insane. Oh, I didn't laugh at it. I, didn't, I, didn't laugh. I mean, she's super powerful. Yeah, she's got to, we got to show the back. She's, she's yeah. really powerful. She's kind of like Indi Indiana Jones, but yeah. not Indiana Jones. Sandra At Atkinson, Plymouth United Kingdom. Uh, you should have read it in a European accent. That was the problem. Mm, yep. Man, you missed that one. Very true. Stella Fail. here. Uh, when you attack, so she's gonna have chemical explosives. I love the title nice. of that already. When you attack, you may f you may forget one. Or you may target one additional figure in the target space. Split the wounds as you like. Whoa! Oh my gosh! 
that's awesome for some of your like lower level cultists and stuff like yeah. that. When you attack, you have one free reroll for each target. Wow. Number three, when you attack, you may target any number of additional figures in the target space. And then finally, when you attack, deal full wounds to, to each, each target. target. Oh my gosh. Like crowd that's control amazing. to the extreme. It's amazing. Then she has Arcane Mastery and Marksman here. Science has many practical applications, like creating dangerously volatile substances. Like flubber. <laughs> Does it count if you make me laugh? I don't know. <laughs> the joy of watching things explode is far more common among scientists, chemists, and in, chemists in particular, than people might believe. Stella posits that while the eldritch being she goes up against exhibits some supernatural properties, they still must abide by the physical laws of this universe. Cause in point, hydrochloric. hydrochloric acid will eat through a monster as quickly as it does a person. Thus, while not all of their properties or abilities are currently understood, time and farther experimentation will bring to light even their most closely held secrets. Also, uh, blowing them up is great fun. <laughs> I, okay, so like, let's thematically look at her board real quick because yeah, yeah. I, I think I missed it. So she's arcane mastery, so she's making potions. Yep. Yep. And then she's marksman, so she can stand in another room and then just toss the potions into yes. the next room. And then those potions hit everything. And then they explode when they hit the room. That yeah. thematically amazing. It's really good. Love it. It's really good. Uh, we've got Hui Kong. Uh, he's got self defense, swiftness, and toughness. So he's going to be able to move. He's going to be able to defend. He's. I mean. He's basically martial arts master, which seems accurate. Uh, Self-defense. When attacked, if no wounds are dealt, you heal one stress and may push the attacker one space away. Nice. I already like where this is going. Yep. You have one free reroll when attacked. Standard par for the course. You okay. have one additional free roll reroll when attacked to total. Okay. Nice. When attacked by a cultist or monster, if no wounds are dealt, kill the attacker. Whoa. So... Not the big guy, obviously, but everyone so he's, else. He's going to be able to move carefully around the area. He's yep. going to be able to manipulate the dice to really get what he needs. And then, even if he doesn't take them out, he can shove them out of his room so he can still search and get whatever he's looking for. And, and his health is a little bit bigger. Oh, no, it's not. And he has toughness, so he has one free reroll when attacked. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's yep. awesome. To fight. Be where they are not. It is that easy and that hard. Kind of like his. It's character. a good mod. You want to read, you wanna read yeah. his, his flavor text? Yeah. Okay. He's from uh, Henan, China. Uh, Hu King has traveled far and wide since an early age, seeking out eldritch horrors and the humans that worship them. But his is not a mission of redemption. There is only one way to redeem those lost to the madness. As such. Even at his advanced age, Hoi King is one of the most lethal investigators a cultist could have the misfortune to cross. He's a master of the martial arts, an artist of death. To investigators, he's a voice of wisdom in an insane world. I kind of feel like he's not really hunting the Eldritch. It did specify and the people that worship him. Mm -hmm. He's got a vendetta against the cultists. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. Oh, Peters. Oh, Peters is a surgeon. He's got brawling and swiftness. West, what does surgeon do? Surgeon, when you kill an enemy, you heal one stress or wound on an investigator in your space. It could be yourself. So you're basically Support. killing somebody by splashing blood on top of other people in your space. Um, instead, you can heal the total health of the killed enemy in any combination of stress and wounds. So if the person you killed was worth four, you can four heals on yourself. That's really awesome. I've got some extra skin I can put on. You don't worry about it. That's right. Uh, that instead, from, you can heal an investigator within one space. That's awesome. Uh, or instead, heal each investigator within one space by that amount. Amazing. Dang. So he's got a lot of support, yep. but he's also got brawling, which means he's going to have a little bit more. Uh, he's going to have a little bit more dice mitigation and a little bit more dice, and he's going to have swiftness. When you run, you can avoid people. Interesting. You, mm -hmm. you can actually like move farther and faster. So, cool. Wait, well, you have to read. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Learning how to heal also teaches us how to harm the bad guys, that is. Quote's not as funny as his picture. Not as funny as his, his picture. His picture's awesome. I do still want to know who he is, though. Yeah. Peters was a doctor at a mental institution, though not a psychologist. 
Any places that houses wards of the state needs a physician and surgeon on hand. Luckily, Peters does both. But more and more, the ravings coming out of some of his patients' mouth began to make some sense. He shifted, he started to worry about his own mental health until he discovered that a cult had taken control of the facility. When they came for him, he was ready. He's sworn an oath to do no harm, but he doesn't feel that it applies to cultists or monsters. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I actually like his picture the best out of all, all of them. I like I his picture a lot. Yep. Ruth, Ruth is going to be Sly. She's going to have stealth and swiftness Sly. Once per round, when you sneak, heal one stress. Okay. Uh, deal one wound to each enemy you sneak past. Cumulative with st st stealth. I like that. Instead, each time you sneak, heal one stress or wound and deal one wound to the enemy. Nice. I like this more and more. Mm -hmm. Once per turn, after, you, after a run in which you sneaked, if you are in a safe place, you may investigate. Oh. <sighs> Starts getting more and more items. Wow. That's awesome. Interesting. Cool. So stealth is going to be pairing up with this sly ability up here. Mm -hmm. I like her. She seems classic. Yeah. Who is she though? Uh, turns out even Elder Torres don't check every shadow. So she's like a, a news reporter. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Ruth Weber. Very nice. All right. Who else do we have here? Ooh. These next three. Spoiler alert. Are going to be the three we played in the gameplay. So yes. we're not going to read their flavor text. But we are going to go ahead and uh, walk you through who they are. We have mm -hmm. Leon. Uh, he's going to be a show-off. Yes. Leon is fantastic. Clearly the best dressed of all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and if there's another investigator in your space, you gain an additional die to roll. So it'll be around Fabulous. people. Uh, the view level kind it up. Kind of a protector in a way. Very much so. Yeah. But more of a show-off because he's really just trying to do it for the... He wants you to see him yeah. protect you. It's important. Uh, in Or you can instead, if there's another investigator within two spaces, you gain that same die. Uh, now you can also have one free reroll per roll yep. if there's another investigator within two spaces. And then if you level it up all the way, instead for each other investigator within two spaces, you gain a die and one free reroll mm -hmm. per roll. Ridiculous amount of dice, ridiculous amount of... Uh, Mitigation. He's very, very cool to hear us play or to see us play as him and hear that flavor text. You can either pause the video now or go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button. Stay yep. tuned for the gameplay. Sally, smile big, Mr. Monster. Wow, wow. Uh, too many teeth. <laughs> She's an avid photographer. Uh, when an investigator leaves your space, you may follow them. So she tracks people down. Mm -hmm. Other investigators in your space gain a green die. So she supports people who are around. They want to impress her. When another investigator in your space rests, you may heal three stress or wounds in any combination. So you also get to camp when they camp. Mm -hmm. And you and another investigator in your space have one extra action each turn, which is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. She's also got arcane mastery and toughness. So she's going to be able to control a little bit of the dice. And she's going to be able to... Uh, be able to use those stars as special abilities, successes, hits, etc., etc. Sally Withers, New York, New York. She was a lot of fun to see play. She was, yeah. Uh, we had a cool combination, and then we have Julian, Silent Witness. Oh my! When making any roll after all re rolls, you may heal one stress for each tentacle. Stress control, because I am not scared by the uh, <laughs> madness that I'm getting. Instead, you may heal two stress for each tentacle. Just get better and better. Instead, you may heal two stress in any combination of stress and wounds for each tentacle. I can now start getting health because I'm going insane. Mm -hmm. And then finally, instead, you may heal two instead of losing sanity from each tentacle. I no longer go insane. Yes. I just now do better. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesse, what's your quote? Yeah. Oh. It's nothing. Right. Uh, <laughs> stealth and Arcane Mastery. And then finally, this is going to be Julian Dulik from Belgrade, Yugoslavia. And uh, someone saying for him, boy is saying he does not think this is a good idea. Mike speaking for Julian. Julian's just called boy and Julian doesn't talk. If you want to find out why Julian doesn't talk, we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start going through some of the other very, very cool, very, very new stuff that we're gonna have here. Let's walk through these special abilities, these cards. So these are gonna be the relic cards. So we'll go through them uh, front and back. And these activate when you hit the third one yep. on the board. So silver key relic. When you run, you may move between spaces with gates as if they were adjacent. Enemies follow. You gain a green die if you're on a space with a gate. More powerful on gates and you mm -hmm. get to jump from one side of the board to another. 
It's pretty awesome. That's amazing. And then when you hit that third spot, this is what it flips over to to become the known relic. Okay. This is the mystical key. Yes. When you run, you may move between spaces with gates as if they were adjacent, and your enemies will follow you, though. But you gain one additional die if you are within two spaces of a gate. So basically, you, this <coughs> changes so you have a straight die buff yep. for the rest, of the, the rest of the game. That's pretty good. Very good. Brass Compass. When you run, you may move two additional spaces. So you go from three to five. A little, awesome. little bit more movement. Yep. Now, when you run, you may move two additional spaces, and you may sneak past an enemy up to three additional times. <laughs> they don't follow you. Wow. That's amazing if you're playing with a character that already has sneak installed. Yeah, even if you don't, it's still nice. I'm just saying. Yeah. Ancient Idol. When you would take wounds, you may prevent up to two and lose the same number of sanity. The sanity loss cannot be prevented or reduced. Just nice. buffing your health. Yep, that's really nice. And flipping this, this is going to be the Rylan Fragment. Oh, this is the Otherworldly Compass. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is uh, this? When you would take wounds, you may prevent any number of wounds and lose the same number of sanity. This sanity loss cannot be prevented or reduced. Okay, so now you just have a, like, your whole sanity track is a buff against a buff. your health, potentially. That's pretty cool. Nice. Jade Amulet. Once during your turn, as a free action, you may move one enemy from your space to an adjacent space, which would be amazing when you're trying to gain, like, yeah. information and investigator stuff. Haunted. Oh, Haunting Amulet. I love the artwork here. Mm -hmm. Twice during your turn, as a free action, you may move one enemy from your space to an adjacent space. Twice during your turn. That's, That's awesome. Amazing. Tons of manipulation there. Sinister Book. Okay. Once per turn, when making any roll, you may count any number of stars as both one success and a tentacle. It stops counting as a star. Nice. Nice. Okay, mm -hmm. so a little bit of a... Uh... You gotta, you gotta make a decision there. Yep. Necronomicon, I thought that's where we were going. When making any roll, you may count any number of stars as two successes and a tentacle. It stops counting as a star. <sighs> that is ridiculously powerful. Just get bigger and bigger. Yep. Shiny jewel. Gain one level in your signature skill. That's pretty cool. That's... That's... That's pretty powerful. That's actually really powerful for a lot. Like, we just went through all those signature skills. Yeah. That's nice. Okay, and then gain one a level, one additional level in your signature skill. So basically, when you, you have hit a total three, of two, whoa! Yeah, when you hit three, you're guaranteed to be at four. Yep, I love this because I almost sometimes I don't even make it to the end of that track. Mm -hmm. Ritual mask. If there is only one enemy in your space and you are considered to be in the safe space, you are considered to be in the safe space for all purposes. The enemy doesn't attack you. You're not being attacked, and, and you're able you, to search. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Ineffable Mask. Oh, that artwork is beautiful. If there are two or fewer enemies oh in your space, gosh. you're considered to be in a safe space for all purposes, and the enemies don't attack you. See, I want to see amazing. how these incorporate backwards. Yeah. Now, you have to mix them in with these other enemies we're going to go through, and they're nasty, but still, like, these... Crazy. Really powerful. Crazy powerful. Uh, crystal Ball. During your turn, keep the top card of the Mythos deck revealed until you draw it for the turn. Once during your turn, as a free action, you may take one stress to place it at the bottom of the deck. Reveal the next. So you can push off him showing up. That's, That's cool. pretty killer. That's pretty That killer. could be clutch. Yeah. And we have the Orb of Fate. During your turn, keep the top card of the Mythos deck revealed until you draw it for your turn. Twice during your turn as a free action, you can take one stress to place it at the bottom of the deck. So you can really start plowing through those cards to push off. That's amazing. That's we have great. a rune-carved spear. Once per turn, if you kill an enemy during an attack, you may immediately attack again for free. Nice. That's a whole second action. And if you're rolling enough dice or have enough dice mitigation... Oh, you could just be a one... Then we have Gungar. If you kill an enemy during an attack, you may immediately attack again for free. That free attack cannot trigger this ability again. What's different here? If you kill an enemy during an attack, you may immediately attack again for free. That free attack cannot trigger once per turn. Mm. If you kill an enemy during an attack, you may immediately attack again for free. Got it. So this... If you kill an enemy, if I use one of my attacks to kill an enemy, you can attack I again. get another free attack. Yep. And I don't re-trigger this. However, if I use that attack... Another attack again. Then I could re-trigger it. I can have, so have six, six full attacks. actions. Wow. If you're a ranged character with this... Yeah. 
Holy cow. Why didn't we play with these? I know, right? Man. The Ruby Talisman. Once per roll before rolling your dice, you may catch fire. If you do, gain a free dice. Did play with this. This was a lot of fun. If you (laughs) upgrade it, you have the Fiery Talisman. Once per roll before rolling a dice, you you may catch one fire. If you do, gain another green die. If you would take wounds from the fire, you may instead deal that many wounds to an enemy in your space. Which is awesome. Your fire becomes your power. Mm-hmm. Okay, lucky coin. You have one free reroll per turn. Yeah, that's not bad. Just a little bit of dice mitigation is always nice. And the charmed doubloon. Now you have one free reroll per roll. Love that. Very nice. Replica blade. This. You gain one green die when attacking a target in your space. A little bit more powerful. And it becomes Excalibur. You gain two green die when attacking a target in your space. Just better. Mm -hmm. Just better across the board. I want so many more of these. Me too. I want an entire pack, like just a 50 card pack. Of just relic. Of just relic cards. Yeah. Because they're so cool to incorporate into the game. They're really cool. Okay, so that's going to be one of the core new features here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other modular feature. So the way this is going to work is that one or two of these can be incorporated into any of the standard game elements. Mm -hmm. These are going to be things that trigger, you'll see, usually based off of when our enemies are engaged with us. So we have the dole here. Uh, This is going to be rolling two green dice, one black dice. It has seven health here, so strong creature. Mm -hmm. That is like a, that's like a mid-level boss here. Yep. When it attacks, each success deals two wounds instead of one. So nasty. Yep. It's in your space. You do not want to be left alone with this guy. But here's where the mechanic of these start incorporating in. This is why they're backwards compatible. When the Elder One advances. Um, the Dole moves two spaces towards the Investigator with the most wounds token. In case of a tie, the nearest with the tied Investigator. And you will then summon a Dole at the nearest gate. So they start spawning. They're always spawning. And they're going to be escalating the game by moving and trying to get as close to you as possible. And if you don't wipe them out, you're in a really bad position because they've got a lot of health. Yep. Serpent Man. Uh, Two health. A little bit weaker. Two black and one green. So a little bit more mitigation there. Might make you go slightly more insane, though. Mm -hmm. There are five of them available. Whereas with the Dole, there's only one of them available. So you won't have multiple of them on the board. And when it attacks... Each tentacle also counts as a success, so it's going to be dealing a little bit more damage because it's got both of those black dice which have the chance of rolling tentacles. And when the Elder One advances, the nearest Serpent Man moves two spaces towards you. Each other Serpent Man moves one space towards you. Summon two super, <laughs> summon two two Serpent Mans at the farthest gate. Ugh. They're going to be pouring onto the board and they're going to be rushing you. Yes. Cool. Um, Gaiathon. Gaiathon. Yes. When it attacks, it heals one for each star rolled. Ugh. And then when the Elder One advances... One black, three green. Three Three green green has a lot of star star potential. Four health, there's a total of two in your pool. Uh, When the Elder One advances, uh, he will move three spaces towards you, and any cultist in spaces it leaves will follow it. Uh, So it's just dragging things along with it, and uh, you will summon one at the nearest gate. We have a ghast. The ghast is going to be, uh, and this is an unknown creature too. Mm-hmm. Interesting, because this was also one of our core standard creatures in the scenario that we played. Was it? Yeah, yeah. So like, we have we have these we have these dudes, which this is going to be the boss that we faced off against, and then we had oh yeah a ghast here in our yep. core scenario. Interesting. So maybe a lot of these things are actually going to be, like, a lot of the creatures from this point moving forward are going to potentially be cross-compatible or something like sure. that. Sure, yeah. All right, gas, three health, five in your pool, rolling two green dice. If attacked but not destroyed, the attacker takes one wound. He's just going to hit you back. Yep. So you <coughs> better knock him out. Okay. And then when the Elder One advances... Uh, each go, uh, each ghast moves one space towards the investigator nearest to it, and then you summon one ghast at the furthest gate and one ghast at your, your <coughs> space. I like their mechanic badly. Yes. No, not, not a big fan. The Unfathomable. Yes. Here's yeah, another so one that crosses the, over. This yep. guy was nasty. Six health. Was He He didn't do this, though. It, on, he didn't. Yeah. No. So, like, these are the actually mechanics slightly are upgraded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, six health, one in the target pool. You're going to have one green, three black dice when he's fighting. Cannot be wounded while there are another monster or cultist in the same space. So, not only is he tough. He's untargetable. He is also untargetable. And he was... 
the mini boss yep. of the scenario we played. So that's that's a big thing to just throw into another mid level campaign. Yep. And when the elder one advances the um, unnameable, whew, yeah. I couldn't read that for some reason. Moves two spaces it's the double towards N. you. It is, yeah. Un, um, un, 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 you just you read it appropriately. It was a long un un pause. Unnameable, yeah. yes. Uh, moves two spaces towards you. Any monsters and spaces it leaves will follow you. So literally anyone is coming with you. Mm -hmm. um, except for cultists. Uh, summon the unnameable at the furthest gate if it's not already bouncing. Gug. Love Gug. Love Gug. We played with Gug. Yep. Uh, two black, one green, five health, two in the combat pool. Gain one green die when attacking if, if it's hex or if it has any wounds. So if you've wounded it, it's going to be stronger. Mm -hmm. When the Elder One advances, each Gug moves three spaces towards you. They are fast. Then each Gug takes one wound and deals one wound to every other figure in its space. Summon one Gug at the farthest gate. They move quick. They hit everyone that they arrive to. They're nasty. And they hurt themselves immediately so that they're already wounded when you're getting ready to play with them. They are nasty. Yep. And then our favorite, the fisher from outside. Wow. As opposed to the fisher from the basement or inside. Or the sniper from the back window. Also different, yeah. yes. Uh, he, after attacking or being attacked, for each star the investigator uh, takes one stress. So when you roll stars, even if you have arcane uh, mastery, you are still taking stress. Uh, when the Elder One advances, each fissure from outside moves to your space, literally okay. flies into your space, and then you summon one fissure from the outside with a furthest gate. We've got two green, one black, three health, two in the combat pool, and that is going to be They're our great nasty monsters. Unknown creatures. So, from there, let's talk about the thing that, again, leave a comment down below. We've got six of them right now to go through with you but everyone's asking for more. Yes. You said 42. 42. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, uh, very so reasonable. So let Simon know what type of cards and effects you would like to see incorporated in. Let's go ahead and go through some of these new uh, abilities that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Health stats. Yeah. Uh, so these will trigger every single time you uh, get to that point on your stress level um, or your madness level. If there is at least, this is autophobia, if there is at least one other investigator in your space, heal all your stress. Otherwise, you will take two stress and then heal one stress for each companion you have. Uh, so as you're picking up information, you'll get those companions that will follow along with you so they can help mitigate this autophobia potential here for you. Cool. We have impulsive uh, aggressor. If there are no enemies in your space, you and each investigator in your space take one wound. Ugh. Otherwise, deal wounds equal to the amount of stress you have to one enemy in your space. So you can work that pretty hard. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. And the artworks, uh, her spilling a wine glass and grabbing the waiter by the shirt collar. <laughs> uh, travel, traveler, traveling fugue. Uh, you must move two spaces away from your current space, if possible. Enemies follow. Enemies oh, will follow you. <laughs> oh, gross. Okay, we have, uh, when you reach a madness mark, put one wound token on this card before resolving it, okay? Compulsive accumulating. Hoarders. If you have fewer uh, items and companions combined than the number of those on uh, number of tokens on this card, take stress equal to the difference. Otherwise, heal all of your stress. You need items. You need yes. things and people in your life, or else you'll go insane. And then this is overcaring. So at the start of the game, you're going to name a protected investigator. Okay. And then uh, because you're so overcaring, if your protected investigator is in your space, they heal all wounds and you heal all of your stress. Mm. Otherwise, you take one stress for each wound your protected investigator has. If they are dead, then nothing happens. And then finally, we have Megalomania. If there's no other investigators alive that have reached more madness than you, heal all of your stress. Otherwise, take two stress. You want to be the fairest or the craziest of them all. Yes. Sweet. So, uh, yeah, I, I really, I think uh, those are lovely. I'd like to see yes. more. Agreed. Okay, a few more things that we want to go through, and then we will be wrapping up here very soon. So, this is how the unknown cards are going to actually work. Um, these are going to be unknown behaviors. 
So move the nearest unknown monster two spaces towards you. These are going to get mixed into the deck. This is another part of the mechanics engine mm -hmm. uh, that just cycles. And then you draw another card. So these, these just escalate them, but don't actually escalate the game. Uh, here we have four... Um, season three, episode two. This is the episode that we just went through. Just figured I'd lay out and, and show some of these cards. Now you're gonna be able to see all of these in the gameplay that we did, um, but you can see they're gonna be triggering the specific thing. Our gameplay dealt with investigators. And so the game actually started really heavily doing things like taking tokens you'd already worked with right. and shoving them back to different locations that are relevant for you to go to. Right. Um, and so there's, there's this ebb and flow of the puzzle, which is gonna be chained off of those. Uh, and then we have the Elder God that we are playing with. Now these, because these are going to be exclusive to this Elder God, I think we should go ahead and go through sure. uh, and take a look at them. So, Cult of Nakai. For each investigator, with at least one fatigue co token, summon a cultist in their space. So the Elder God's core mechanic is going to work off of a system called Fatigue. Fatigue yes. is going to go onto your board on your stress or your health location. And it not only starts triggering these cards, but it blocks what you're able to actually heal up to. Now, you yeah. can remove one. By healing. By yeah. healing. Same one-for-one one action that you can do with any other things. But it is a limited. It creates a limited resource market that's, that's even more tight. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Tireless Devotees. This is going to be one of your triggering cards. And each cultist moves one space towards you. Then you take one stress for each enemy in your space. Summon a cultist. On the red gate. Yep. So, get a little bit of stress. Moving things up, we have Sleeper of Nikai, another triggering card. Which is choose an investigator to gain one fatigue token, then the investigator with the most fatigue token takes one stress, one wound, and loses one sanity. Uh, if tied, choose one. Now, I like that they give you some control over it because it means you're not just getting an insta-kill by drawing a card like this, but it does yeah. mean that the party is even more so collaborating, working together, figuring out where to spend their resources. Or one person could refuse to take them and make sure that everybody else takes them. And one person could basically guarantee <laughs> our success. Right. Or almost. <laughs> Exhaustion Hunt. Uh, another triggering card here. The cultist farthest from the investigator with the most fatigue tokens moves to that investigator's space. If tied, choose one of the tied investigators. So they're just popping onto your space. This one sucks because it keeps you from actually doing your end of turn investigating. Yes, and getting items. <laughs> Divine Slothfulness. So you can gain one fatigue token. Yeah. Then, if any investigator has four or more fatigue tokens, advance uh, to the track as if it were, <laughs> as if it were at the third space. So basically, you're immediately yeah. making him alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is bad. Yeah, it's very bad. That uh, happened earlier. Amorphous Scion. The nearest Amorphous Scion moves one space towards you. If you have a fatigue token, it moves to your space. Summon an Amorphous Scion. We have our Amorphous Scion here. This is going to be a very goopy, goopy boy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to have a damage of three, uh, token pool of two, one black, two green. When attacked by an investigator with a fatigue token, reduce wounds taken by one. So basically you're he's got tired. like a shield. If you're tired, you work worse against them. Yep. Uh, sweet. All right, next one. Evil Inertia. Each cultist and Amorphous Scion moves one space towards you. Blech. And then it summons one of each. Nice. And Tessagu's presence. I don't know how to say that name. If Tessagua. Tessagua is on the board, each investigator takes two stress. For every stress they cannot take, uh, take one wound instead. If Tessagua mm -hmm. is on the track, each investigator gets one fatigue token. That card is not good. Is crushing. Yes. It's crushing. Okay. Let's take a look at the enemies that we had. These base models here. So again, you've already seen some of these. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to kind of like flash them here on the camera for anyone that wants to like take a closer look for any particular reason. But these are from the scenario that we played. This here is a scenario that we played. Again, we read this during the gameplay, so I don't think I need to like dive through and read through all of this. Yep. But you have it here in case you want to see some of the mechanics. Let's take a look at our big boss. So, Tessagwa. When an investigator gains a fatigue token, they place it on the leftmost available space of their stress or wound track, blocking that space. Take a wound or stress if needed, but you cannot remove the tentacle marker from the rightmost stress space. Whenever investigator rests, they must they may heal one less to discard one fatigue token from them before healing. When Tethswaga advances, choose an investigator gain one fatigue token. Move each amorphous scion one space towards you, summon one amorphous scion on the nearest gate. He is yeah. rough. So he's going to be working by, by manipulating our tracks and really limiting the amount, like 
you're at risk of dying early on. Yep. So and now uh, once he's out, he's gonna get bigger and bigger. So twelve health. Uh, one black, two green. When revealed, summon Tethwagwa onto your space. Summon one amorphous scion in the nearest yeah. gate. He, he comes directly to you. So wherever you are, congratulations, he's now here. At the end of each turn, choose an investigator to, one, to gain one fatigue token unless they discard one item or companion. He starts Which ripping apart really sucks. the stuff that you have. Stage two, he's going to be lower in dice. One black, one green, 12 health still. When revealed, move Tethwagwa to the yellow gate. Each investigator gains one fatigue token when they take two stress. You start escalating that more and more. At the end of each turn, the investigator with the most fatigue tokens takes one stress, one wound, and loses one insanity. If they if they tied, choose one. He's not really dangerous when it comes to hurting you. It is, the, it is this manipulation, it is this status manipulation that is ripping you apart. Yep. And then finally, uh, when revealed, move to Sagwa to the starting space. Then each investigator gains two fatigue tokens. Yeah. Any one investigator may sacrifice themselves, take wounds until they are dead, to stop this effect. So one person can be like, peace out, I'm going to die so you guys don't have to deal with this. Because, frankly, you could pretty much die by this happening. I mean, you can get to the point yeah. where it, it's really, really rough. So, that is our uh, big boss that you're going to be facing off against. And the final thing that I think is going to be fun to look through. Now, these are all unique to each scenario that we play. We mm -hmm. were playing uh, Top of the Morning, uh, Season 3, Episode, episode two. 2. I don't want to go through every single one of these. I will, I will cycle them through the table because mm -hmm. some people want to see them. But we did end up collecting the vast majority of these and read through them on the gameplay. Oh, yeah. So, I would encourage you to, to make sure you stay tuned for that. But the thing that I want to show is actually going to be some of these that give you um, a bit more choice. The flask, for instance, is gonna be one of these. The flask is really cool because it's liquid courage, so you'll soon be feeling no pain. So you can claim the flask. Now, at the beginning, the flask is full. Goes so you to can, the right side of your board. Yep, so you can use the flask, and you may take an. In, you may now use the flask, and then you can basically heal all of your stress, yep. which is fantastic, and now your flask is empty. So it now goes to the left side of the board. And with the empty flask, at the end of your turn, if you're in the pub, then you can take the flask side of the card and flip it over. So basically, you fill it up at the pub, now you've got a full flask, yeah. so you can redo this over and over again, which I think is a really It's cool really neat. Mechanic. It gives you a little bit more like pick up and deliver type mechanics to a game that, that really didn't have a lot more interaction with these cards after you already had them. Some of them mm -hmm. always, some of them chained together, some of them paired well. Yep. Uh, but I like this like on the board manipulation here. Um, and so there's a few of the things that start that start doing that. Now there's also going to be a big hex mechanic here. So when you see the cards kind of pointing back and forth. You're either taking a curse if you're able to, or you're potentially getting uh, hexed if uh, if you're not able to avoid that. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a, a whole collection of husbands here as well, yes. um, which is just lovely. Now, the bartender is another one of these fun cards that I wanted to highlight. Uh, bartender, I keep my shillelagh under the counter, good at walking and keeping unruly patrons civil. You may claim the bartender. So to start with, you just claim the bartender, Sean. Uh, at the end of your turn, if you are in a pub, take the shillelagh side of this card. So mm -hmm. he is your defense for you. He's a heart. You don't have to go to the pub. Yep. But if you do go to the pub, you then get the shillelagh. When you run, you may move one additional space. When attacking a target in your space, gain two green die. Pretty awesome. It's a powerful ability. It's a more powerful card than you typically see, but it's because there's a pickup, a, a like another little stage you have to yep. go through to get it. So it's it gives you a small cool. buff and then a big buff. And that's going to be the Ghost of the Fourth Husband. And that is going to be flipping Cthulhu, Cthulhu Death, Death and Die. Season 3. We have given you Everything. all the information we have access to. Yep. We, we did try. We, uh, we were actually going to kidnap Travis and hold him ransom. Um, but Jeff said keep him. Yeah. So. Yeah. Didn't even want him back. Yeah. He was like, it's fine. We've got more. Shocking. So, um, I am insanely excited about more Cthulhu Death May Die. It's going to be fun. I'm insanely excited about some of the modules that kind of are backwards compatible. Yeah. Uh, I do hope that, you know, some of the base game and some of the stuff is going to be more available to people. I know, I know it can be hard to get your hands on, too. Do you even have a copy? I don't. And it's like $300 on EA yeah. right now. It's so, ridiculous. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they do with the campaign. Um, I think... You know, in, in my mind, it's a no-brainer to just get everything as available as possible. But, um, but there are some IP things or some logistic yeah. things that just make that more and more complicated. And so. I know that you can still buy Season 2, like the expansion pack. So yeah. that would be kind of cool. At the very least, you can you be able to utilize the Season 2 pack in this, yeah. in theory, which would yeah. be cool. 
Uh, but if you're watching at this point, you're already a big fan of Cthulhu Death May Die. You're already back in the campaign. You just yeah. wanted all the information, and we gave it to you. Trying to give it to you. If you've made it to this point, genuinely, I mean it. The more engagement we get on this video, the more likely we are to do another full gameplay paired with season two or season one content. That'd be so cool. Doing all that backward compatible stuff. So let us know mm -hmm. what chapter, what scenario, what season. I would love to get this to the table again. I'd love to do more gameplay. If there's an audience out there that wants it, we will provide.